Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here. My name is Mary and today's video is going to be some books that I want to see adapted for the screen in some way. So I have this video divided into books that I think would make good movies, miniseries, and TV shows. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of these choices. If you wish that something I said should be a miniseries should just be a TV show or a series of movies instead or something like that. Um, but without further ado, I am just going to jump into it. So first, I'm going to start with my movies that I think should be adapted. First up, I think The Midnight Library by Matt Haig would make a really good movie. I thought originally about putting this in the miniseries category, but I think that might just make it too long. Like, I think it could be condensed into a good film. I think you would have to cut a lot of things that happen in the book, but I think you could just focus on, like, brief snippets from each life rather than her living in each life. For a super long amount of time if you don't know the midnight library is about a woman named nora who is at the end of her rope kind of and she's sort of thinking about like all of the choices that she wishes she had made in her life and then she finds this library where she gets to look into the books and each book has a different version of her life that she gets to sort of read and decide if she's made the right choices or not then i also think the maidens by alex michaelides could make a good movie i also think potentially it could be a good mini series and you could combine the other works that he has done because I think they all are in the same world or universe. And so I think like each series of, or season of the miniseries could be a different book, if that makes sense. I think The Maidens would have to be the first one because it chronologically, I believe, happens first. I haven't read The Fury, but I think at least The Maidens comes before, what is it, The Silent Patient chronologically. Um, obviously, you don't have to read them in any order uh, because it doesn't really like interact that much, but there are characters that cross over, if that makes sense. But The Maidens is a like mystery thriller set at Oxford or Cambridge, one of those schools. And we follow Mariana, who is a group therapist, and her niece is at school. At, I think it's Cambridge, at Cambridge. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> and there's a murder that takes place or a series of murders and they believe it's related to maybe a cult or something like that. So I think this could be a really good movie. Again, I think Mr. Thrillers have to be so careful when they're adapted into like a mini series because yes, you get more like information that way, but also like what makes a mystery thriller good to me is keeping it snappy, keeping it tight. And I think with a mini series or a TV show, you have too much of a chance to draw it out and lose the watcher's attention. So that's just my opinion. You can let me know how you feel about that. Also, I don't think The Maidens is a super complicated plot. I didn't personally like The Maidens as a book, but I think it could make a cool show or movie rather. The next one I have is The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Kassara. This is set in the 80s during the AIDS crisis and it's following this group of boys and trans women who are like in the gay community and they are starting their own house in Harlem, I think, to be like a... Um, what is it? Like a drag queen house of sorts. Uh, it also is like roughly based on real people. I think this could make a really, really powerful movie um, and I would love to see it. Uh, also, I have Educated by Tyra Westover in this slot. I think that Educated would make a really good movie. I know that they made The Glass Castle into a movie. I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things about it. So I think the same thing could be done here. Again, I think a mini series would make it too long and drawn out. I don't think it has enough substance for a TV show, but I think a movie would be really, really interesting. I don't know if Tara Westover is interested in sharing her life on screen like that, but she did write this book. So she's at least interested in sharing it in some way. So I would be interested to see a movie of it, uh, but you'll have to let me know what you think about that. The next one I have is The Library Book by Susan Orlean, and this is where I think I might lose people. But Susan Orlean had The Orchid Thief, I think, as a book, and that was adapted into a movie called The Adaptation. And the movie was very meta, and it was about trying to adapt this nonfiction work into a movie, and it became like a true crime movie. And I think what I really want is for them to do that again. <laughs> so I know that like, that's already been done, but I just think it's such an interesting concept for an adaptation. And I think it could be really interesting if they sort of like combined the world of the book with the real world again. And the library book is about this crime that happened in Los Angeles and the Los Angeles library, I believe again in the eighties or the nineties where somebody who they never found out who it was like lit a match and burned down the library. And so I think that that could be a really cool movie. Like maybe not adapting the book, but like, adapting that true crime event, um, I think could be very interesting to see in a movie again. Cause I, again, I don't think that's enough for like a mini series, but I do think it would make an interesting film. The next one I have is actually two. So I have Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett and The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord. And both of these are like YA rom-coms. Um, and I think I just want to bring back the YA rom-com, especially with the success of things like My Summer with the Walter Boys and um, what's the other Jenny Han thing that got adapted to Netflix? To all the boys I've loved before. Like I think the audience is there. Both of those did really well and they are based on young adult books. I know that there was also a 
Sarah Dessen book that was adapted that I watched the adaptation for that was pretty good made by Netflix again and then um there was something else oh the his the statistical probability of love at first sight I think the movie is just called love at first sight but that was based on like a, a young adult rom-com. So I think the time for the young adult rom-com is back and I would love to see more studios like Netflix and Hulu make originals, uh, just movies that they could release based on those. Cause I think like the budget doesn't have to be that big. Okay, and I think it could be really good. So I would love to see that. Then I have The Other People by CJ Tudor, which is like another mystery thriller that I think could make a really interesting movie. So this is about a guy who is driving down the highway one day. He's in England, I don't know what they call it. If it's, it's not an interstate obviously, but like, essentially the motorway I don't know uh but he's driving down the road and he thinks he sees his daughter waving from the back of another car and then he gets a call or he calls his house and there are police at his house because his daughter and his wife have been murdered and so he doesn't think his daughter has actually been murdered he thinks that it's like she's been kidnapped and he basically spends like years of his life trying to figure out what's happened to them and then we're several years in the future in like the present day of this book and he's still trying to like unravel what's happened and find his daughter and I think that could make a really interesting movie um if you've read it I don't want to spoil anything obviously but like I just really think based on what I remember from reading it that it could make a really interesting movie and then the last one I have is Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Moreno Garcia and I think that would make a really good movie because I love the like old school it's like a movie or <laughs> So it's a book about like old cult classic horror films. And because of that, like people like books about books and people like movies about movies, if that makes sense. Like movie people like to watch movies about movies and this is would be a movie about, about movies. And I think that that would really work for like a film audience. I don't know necessarily that it would work as well in a mini series, but feel free to let me know if you disagree with me. I kind of waffled on where I would put this, but I do think that it would make a really interesting movie. Just the dynamics between the characters, I think could be explored really interestingly. And I think the idea of like this like cult classic horror film director guy um, coming back and trying to make another movie, like I think that kind of thing would really work on screen. So you'll have to let me know if you agree or disagree with those choices. I have a lot that I think would make good mini series. So bear with me. But at first I have One by One by Ruth Ware. And I also have The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. And I have some qualms about that one. Those are both retellings actually. So One by One is a retelling of And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And The Turn of the Key is a retelling of The Turn of the Screw. And I think both of those have enough going on that they could make really interesting mini series, particularly One by One. So I don't know that I've ever seen an adaptation that was directly a and then there were none retelling. I'm sure everyone in the comments will be like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And you'll all be right. But none really come to mind. There was recently a remake of The Turn of the Screw. It was done by the same people who did The Haunting, the Haunting of Hill House, which was based on a Shirley Jackson book. But they did The Haunting of Bly Manor, which was based on The Turn of the Screw. So I know that it's been recently done, but I do think this has enough, Ruth Ware's version has enough differences that it could be interesting um, to see I don't know but one by one I really think would be interesting because it's set in the French Alps and we're following these like the main character I would say is this girl Erin who is basically like the maid and the person who runs this like chalet type thing and then she's hosting this group of people who are from a company called Snoop which is basically Spotify but it can like track your it's like Spotify mixed with Twitter kind of and I think that's a really interesting concept for like a movie or a, a, a mini series and each episode could be like a different person dying basically is what I was sort of thinking so you'll have to let me know if you agree or disagree with that but I like the like Snowden setting um and I just think it could be a really interesting mini series. The next one I have is The Library of Mount Char by Scott Hawkins which is a very strange book and to be honest I don't know if there's quite enough for a mini series on this one but I feel like there's too much for a regular movie and honestly this might not even be good to be adapted at all because it's such a weird concept but I think visually it would be stunning. And I think that's like the biggest drawback to reading it as a book is that you can't like visually see all the things. So the premise of this one is it's, how do I even describe it? So like <laughs> the main character is this guy who meets this girl, I think her name's Caroline at a bar and he's like a thief and she lives with this group of people who are, they have this guy who's like the father or something who has been taking care of them since they were children and they're each trained in a particular, um, like very specialized skill set. So like David is really into like war and battles and he's like the best at that. And then um, the other ones like Rachel is really good at like death and calling back the dead. And I don't remember what Caroline's is, but one of them is really good at like talking to animals. And there's all these different like specialties that they have, I guess. 
and I just think it would make a really interesting mini series. I just would love to see this adapted to something because I'm so fascinated by it. The next one I have is East of Eden. So I heard they are making an East of Eden movie again. So they, the original one that came out, I think, was in, I don't even know when, but it had Jesse James in it. Not Jesse James. Hold on. It had James Dean in it. And I watched it after I read the book the first time. And I liked it, but I felt like there wasn't enough time in a movie to really go into like the cyclical nature and cover all of the plot points of East of Eden, which is not that long of a book. It's only like 400 pages, but it does have like a lot of stuff in there. And I really think it would be interesting to see it as a mini series. So I've heard that they're making a movie with Florence Pugh. I don't know if that's true. Um, if it is, I'm very excited to watch it, but I would love to see a mini series of this just so everything could be fully fleshed out. I, I don't know exactly how that would go though because there is one Asian character that's treated very like racistly throughout the whole book as you can imagine because of when it was written but I still would like to see that adapted and see what they could do with that character because I think it's a really interesting concept. The next one that I think would be a really good mini series is Behind the Red Door by Megan Collins. I don't know if other people have read this but it's about this girl um, or woman rather who when she was a child there was someone in a town near her who was like kidnapped and then either found dead or like found alive later. Like there was some mystery from when she was a child that she didn't remember until she goes back to her small town as like an adult pregnant married woman to help her dad move. And she's always had a very tumultuous relationship with her dad. Her parents um, had a very like tumultuous marriage and they're now getting divorced. And so like she's helping her dad move out. Her mom was an artist and her dad was like a child psychologist who specialized in children's fear. And I just think that I don't want to say anything else because I don't want to spoil it, but I just think that like, I didn't love this as a book, but I think as a mini series, it could be so like creepy and gripping and like interesting to see what happens. I don't know. I remember what I didn't like about it when I was reading it is that I thought it was very obvious what was going on. And it kind of was, there was a twist that I wasn't expecting, but the ultimate thing, I did know what was happening, but I think, it, I still think it could be a really interesting mini series. Um, just like that exploration. And then in a mini series would give it time to do all the flashbacks to when she's a kid and all the things that are happening. And so you could do almost like a dual timeline until the watcher figures out what's going on. Like, I think that would be a really interesting mini series. The next one I have is I'm not dying with you tonight. Um, so I struggled whether to put this in film or mini series, but I think there's enough going on that it could make a good mini series. And again, this is another book that I didn't love. But I mostly am surprised that this was never adapted because it came out around the time that The Hate You Give came out and like the Black Lives Matter movement was like really popular. And I think that The Hate You Give was a pretty popular, and I know they made it into a movie relatively quickly. I don't know how well the movie did, I guess, admittedly, but I watched it. I liked it. And I know the book was super popular. So I feel like this was a similar premise. So this is about if all two characters, there's like a white character at the school and a black character at the school. And then there are these riots that break out over Atlanta. And the two girls are trying to figure out how they're going to safely get home. And they've never really interacted before, but they have to like come together and figure out how they're going to get out of this very dangerous situation. And they both have to overcome prejudices of the other. And I just think that that's like Hollywood bait, you know, like I don't understand why it wouldn't have been adapted yet. And I, I think it could be a really interesting and like uplifting series. So, um, I don't know. I, that's kind of one of the things that I'm like, why wasn't? this adapted like why haven't there been more things like this even if this story exactly wasn't adapted I feel like this kind of thing in theory there should be more of it right I don't know maybe I'm wrong the next one I have is Social Creature by Tara Isabella Burton and this is a how do I even describe this this book is about this woman who is living in New York City she's trying to be a writer she's like hitting almost 30 and so she's like feeling like she's too old to really be still working like three random jobs while she's trying to make it as her writer career and she ends up meeting this very young socialite who like takes her under her wing and they like sort of become like best friends and then things go off the rails I really feel like in the aftermath of like the Anna Delvey popularity this could have been a hit show so I really wish that they had adapted it um or something like it again it is very similar to something else that actually has just gotten another adaption another adaptation um and I don't want to say what it is but it is a show it's also based on a book that I've never read the book um and I've never seen like the original adaptation of the book but it did just get readapted so if you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about but um I do want to watch that uh sorry I'm being so vague I really don't want to spoil Social Creature because it's such a good book and I wish more people had read it I feel like nobody's read it but it's so good and then I also have If You Leave Me in the category of mini series uh this one is set in Korea during the, I guess it's the Korean Civil War when North Korea was splitting from South Korea. And it follows this 
girl who her and her family go to this refugee camp and when she's there she meets two different men or two different boys and then she's like trying to decide she has to decide it's like a love triangle basically but she picks one path and then spends her whole life about like thinking about what she would have done if she picked the other path and it like just all the hardships that come with that and I thought this book was so powerful so beautiful I talked about this in the books that I wish more people would talk about because I feel like nobody talks about it but I think that this would make a really good mini series, and I think it would be really interesting because I know historical fiction does pretty well in TV and I wish that they were doing more like adaptations or just like more shows books movies on things that weren't like World War II you know and this is one of them so I just think it would make a really interesting mini series and also with the rise of like the k-drama like I feel like it's got enough like mass appeal that it could work and then the last one that I have for mini series is Akatar. here's the thing I don't know if this would be better as like a film series I don't know if it would be better as like a tv show but I feel like tv show kind of like almost cheapens the idea of it like I feel like it would really hit as a mini series with multiple seasons but maybe that is a tv show I don't really know but A Court of Thorns and Roses is so popular I cannot believe it has not been adapted yet I can only imagine that it's like in talks but I haven't heard anything about it I don't really keep up with that kind of thing but I just think like based on the popularity that book talk has brought it based on the popularity that people on booktube have talked about it forever um people love those books and they're being like highly pushed in every bookstore you go into now everybody talks about them everybody loves them middle-aged moms love them like at this point that is like the twilight of this generation. I feel like they really could market that and make that into a film series, a TV show, a mini series that would be like super successful. And the fact that they haven't almost has me like scratching my head. I do know that Sergio Mass is trying to combine or maybe successfully is. I haven't read the last Crescent City book, so I don't know. And I haven't read any of the Throne of Glass books, but I know that she's trying to sort of like combine those worlds and say that they're all happening like in an order. So maybe once all of them are out, they will be like a TV show, movie series, mini series, something on them. But like, I'm honestly shocked that none of Sarah J. Mass's stuff has been adapted. And Crescent City is also on this list because I would love to see a Crescent City adaptation. Personally, I like the first Crescent City book better than anything else that Sarah J. Mass has ever written. I don't like the second Crescent City book that much. And I feel about the same about the entire Akatar series. So um, I'm not like a huge Sarah J. Mass fan, but I'm just shocked that none of it has been adapted yet because it seems like a money pit. Like I think you could make so much money doing that. A money pit might be like the negative association, but I'm like a cash cow. Like I think she, I just think she could be like a billionaire <laughs> if she was like, selling the film rights to these things but maybe not or maybe she is I really don't know speaking of tv shows I think that there should be more cozy mystery tv shows so I haven't watched it but I know that that Selena Gomez show is super popular and people love it I don't know if it's exactly cozy mystery but it kind of gives me those vibes so I, I'm thinking like I read the Firefly Junction books by London Love It. I feel like that would be a really good TV show adaptation um or something because then there doesn't really need to be like a solid beginning middle and end like each season can have an arc and it doesn't have to do all 15 books in 15 season or however many books there are in that series now I think I've only read three but like it could do enough and there's also like a romance element of that like I just think all of that could be tied up in a really neat little bow over a tv show and like tv shows don't maybe I'm wrong about this they don't seem to have to be as like well thought out on how they're gonna end because it kind of does seem like however well they're doing is how long they're gonna keep going so I feel like it could be that kind of thing. I don't know. I just think that we should have more cozy mystery TV shows. If you have other recommendations for cozy mystery series that should become a TV show, let me know. Also, if besides other murders in the building, if you have other like cozy mystery type shows in mind, I would love to watch them because I just that that kind of thing sounds so good to me. The next one that I have for TV show is The Rise of Kiyoshi books. Um, they're novelizations based on side characters of the Avatar The Last Airbender series by FCE. And I read them, thought they were fine, but I really do, like, I loved Avatar The Last Airbender. And I know that there's already been, like, um, what was it? Remember, there was already a, like, side series about a character whose name I can't remember, but I really feel like you could go back. It's back in time, technically, but, like, there could be a spinoff show about Kyoshi and her like rise to fame as an avatar and like Rangi who trains her and they have like a little romance like I just think it would go so well um and I think people would watch it I would watch it I would love it so I really feel like that should be made a tv show and if it already is let me know because I really haven't looked into it but I think it could be successful the next one that I have for tv shows is Scythe by Neil Shusterman I can't believe that 
these books weren't adapted at the height of their popularity because that was around the time that like the Hunger Games was super popular, like the Shadow Hunter Realm was super popular, like all of the YA fantasy dystopia stuff was so big and I feel like it could have been so so good. But I, I, I sorry, but I still feel like the Scythe books could make such an interesting television show. Um, and also like they could have been a, a film series, but I just feel like when there's so much in each book, it makes more sense to have it be like more episodes and more time with the characters and more time with what's going on. So it's not like rushed um, and you don't have to cut as much out. But you can let me know if you disagree with that. Obviously, I have no skin in this game. No one is listening to me on these things. I would just love to hear your opinions. But I love Scythe and I think it could make such a cool TV show. And I honestly like I know that it's supposed to be like super futuristic or whatever, but like there's not really that much that's super futuristic about it that you couldn't relatively easily do for like a normal TV network. And I'm even talking like Hulu could adapt it, you know, and I would be so happy about it. I really wish that that was made into a TV show because I feel like the ideas behind it are so cool. And you could even tie in some of the like elements from the short story collection that he put out set in the same world. Uh, and make it really interesting. If you don't know what Scythe is, it's a YA dystopian series about this world where like death is out. Death doesn't exist anymore uh, because we've evolved to where we can like heal basically anything. And so to keep the population under control, we have these beings called Scythes who are specially trained in the art of killing. And they're the only people who are allowed to kill people. And we're following in the first book, Rowan and Citra, who are two like junior Scythe, or they're two Scythe apprentices, I guess. They're not junior Scythes yet but they're being trained to become scythes. And we're just watching the like different ways that different people in the world sort of view the scythe them. And I just think it would be such a good show. I just really wish it was adapted for TV because I think it would be so, so interesting and it could be so, so cool. I also have on my TV show list, um, I have the Newsflash series by Mira Grant. And admittedly, I've only read the first book, but I just think, especially with like the popularity of like Y2K aesthetics right now, um, Newsflash is set in the past now but it was like the future at the time and I guess it is still set in the future but like there was a zombie outbreak in 2012 I think or 2014 and so now people just live with zombies and instead of having news outlets we basically have like vloggers who vlog the news um and they have these like blogs where they keep track of everything and it's like very early 2000s coded to me I don't know why that is I don't even think that's what it was written I think it was written in like well the mid 2000s probably but like it has that vibe and I think that could translate really well to tv that would be really popular right now also with the success of tv shows like The Walking Dead and um The Last of Us I think like zombies still have a place in society uh people still like zombie stuff and the only problem that I find with this one is that it is very politically heavy which honestly might end up making it a plus because it does seem like they're making several like politically heavy tv shows these days especially like U.S. politic heavy TV shows talking about one specific election in 2016 that everyone seems to like still be really hung up on which understandably so but I think it could really work um it has a very similar vibe to that so I really do think it's very it's it could be a very interesting television show and I think that they could really make it work again I have only read the first book in that series and I do plan on continuing it at some point I haven't yet but I just can't stop thinking about how like I think it could be a good show, like a hit show. And then the last thing I have on here is not necessarily like what I think would make a good TV show or a mini series, but like with the success of the TV show Bridgerton, I don't understand why more networks aren't making adaptations of standalone romance series, like series, romance, standalone, romance, series of standalone, series of standalones. Is that what I'm trying to say? Like, I have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez on here, but really, like, anything could work. And I think part of the problem is that, like, a lot of, like, especially the Abby Jimenez books, I love them, but the characters don't interact a ton in a way that makes it, like, super interesting to read. Especially every time she has a third book, it's always, like, a random side character's cousin who you're like, okay, like, why don't you just make them a group of three friends? Like, why are we having to follow this, like, random other person who's not really related to the rest of the group? That being said, I think that a series of standalone romances could make a really good TV show like Bridgerton. I know that it wouldn't have the same effect of Bridgerton because part of the draw to Bridgerton, if you will, has to be like the period element to it. So like the fact that it is set in, is it Victorian or Edwardian? I don't know. Uh, but like during balls and like all of that stuff, like courting is a big thing. Um, all of the like court politics. So all of that, 
Um, the aesthetic of that, I definitely think is the draw or one of the main draws, but I just think that there could be, I want more rom-coms is what I'm saying. Like I, I maybe they should just make a rom-com movie of part of your world, but like, I want to see more rom-coms. I don't know why we're not making more rom-coms. Um, even if they're just like Netflix released rom-coms and we're starting to see more of them actually, which is very exciting news for me personally, but like bring back the rom-com. Like I, I deserve a rom-com. So um, that's where I'm going to leave you. Those are the however many things that I wish would be adapted and how I would personally like to see them adapted. Feel free to let me know if you agree, disagree, beg to differ on any of these things because um, I would love to hear other people's opinions on this. If you have something that you think would make such a good adaptation and you've like thought out how you would want to adapt it, please let me know in the comments down below. If you think that any of these would make horrible adaptations, please let me know. Also feel free to comment on like, my opinion on the success of things based on like other things that are popular right now. Um, and if you think I'm like totally off base, cause obviously I don't work in a media industry um, at all. I just am a consumer of media. So that's the only like expertise I have on anything is that I, I like to watch TV and movies. So with that being said, um, like this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more from me because I do try to post two videos every single week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.